Coach, from the stadium that hosted Super Bowl 51 back in 2017, we are inside NRG Stadium in Houston. The scene from a few moments ago, this crowd enthusiastically cheering on their Texans as they emerge from the locker room. And we're just about ready for football as the Texans get set to match up. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line with the Indianapolis Colts. Watson throwing quickly to Hopkins. It'll go as a loss of three right away, and it's second down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Here's Watson. And a catch made by Hopkins. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball, and sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Indianapolis coming back out here. And earlier we mentioned the injury to Jacoby Brissett in week nine against Pittsburgh. Now remember, they were already without T.Y. Hilton out for multiple weeks, injuring his calf in practice. And also center Ryan Kelly left the Steelers game as well. So the Colts now at five and three, a little dinged up. Yeah, to put it mildly, and when you lose your starting center and your starting quarterback, that's a big hole to fill for any team. And look at what ended up happening. A lot of mistakes happened too. What do they call them, the cardiac Colts from last year? A pick six, two lost fumbles, blocked by extra point. And they missed a potential game-winning field goal. So add it all together, there goes a three-game win streak out the window. They have won five of their last six, though, and they will still contend in the AFC South. Yeah, Adam Vinatieri, you mentioned the missed game-winning field goal. He hit the game-winner in Week 8, but now he's just 14 of 19 on extra points and 12 of 17 on field goals. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. A gain of 16 yards. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Here's the second year back out of NC State, Naheem Hines. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. From just shy of midfield, Brissett complete to Hilton. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 29-yard line. The goal for any offense versus his own defense Find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. To throw is Brissett. He's got Jack Doyle. The completion good for three and it's second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync stayed in great communication and as he dragged across each zone you see him pointing communicating there he is and they passed him off to each defender ended up making a nice play even though it was complete and inside the 20 before he's brought down that's good for an indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. quite the opening drive march they're on right now it looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game doesn't it you know because on that last big practice beforehand 
you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. Take it in by the tight end, Doyle. He's down inside the 10 to the 8, and it comes on a gain of 8. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. Seven yards there at a first down. Well, he did everything but get him in the end zone there, but now they're set up. Golden opportunity, strong opening drive, and they're knocking on the door. And the way that they did it, now look where they are on the field, all right? This is naturally set up for a running play, isn't it? But with his ability to throw the football, his accuracy on this drive, you might want to think about a pass play in this situation. Hmm, interesting. Time to find out. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and goal. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Back at the two now, here's second and goal. They'll try to run with Hines. And I think they stopped him again. They did at the one-yard line. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action, throw the ball. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Taking it in from two yards out. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Texans taking the field again here. You know, earlier we were talking about their 6-3 and three start after the win against Jacksonville this past week. That also puts them in first place in a crowded AFC South. And all of a sudden, I think maybe they're looking like the favorite in that division over Indianapolis. What do you think, CD? I would agree with that for two reasons. One, how about how they absorbed the loss of J.J. Watt, at least for a week, right? They lose him the week before. They travel across the water. They play in London, and they play really well against a good Jacksonville defense and end up winning the season series with the Jags for the fifth time in Bill O'Brien's six seasons as the head coach. And the second thing, Deshaun Watson at quarterback. When you look at that division, it has to come down to look at the quarterback position because Jacoby Brissett got hurt for Indianapolis this past week. Who's it going to be in Jacksonville, Minshew or Nick Foles? And in Tennessee, it's the backup Ryan Tannehill. I like Deshaun Watson in that spot. Upcoming schedule for them, by the way, Charles. They'll have their open week and then a pretty tough road. They go to Baltimore and then three tough ones at home against Indy, New England, and Denver. Brissett, 19. 53, Mike, Mike. Let's go, let's go. He's coming. Double up, double up. Looks to throw, fires right side. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter 
feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. That'll be a 50-yard punt with eight on the return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 to nothing lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Well, there's times when you see these catches that are made, and we just know the guys playing it are really wishing for college rules. Only need that one, one foot, foot down instead of two. It's awfully difficult on the sideline, isn't it? So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. On the bootleg, it's Brissett. A good throw here, finding Pascal. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Good yardage there for the Colts. 18 and a first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Now the guy has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Up to make the stop, the Texans' leading tackler a year ago, Zach Cunningham. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. On second down, here's a run with Mack. And now running right through it. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 49-yard line. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. The linebacker, Zach Cunningham, there defensively to make that play. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. They'll run it, it's Mack. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. From the gun, here's Brissett. And he's got his man, Hilton. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Good yardage there for the Colts. 18 and a first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. A run there on first down and a pretty good one at five yards, so make it second and five. Bernardrick McKinney, a first-time Pro Bowler a season ago, in on the tackle there. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. I also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. 16 yards, a first down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. It is tough to complete passes against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. 
How about being able to hit a moving target against his zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Chester Rogers that time, but now it's third and goal. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you kind of run out of your running plays, fire another one into the end zone. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. So with fourth down coming up, here's Adam Vinatieri now for the Colts field goal. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Vinatieri's kick is good. Vinatieri, the NFL's oldest active player, also the league's all-time leading scorer, passed Morton Anderson last year. Yeah, he turned 46 in December of 2018. He really can't see it in his leg, maybe in the beard. You can see it in the beard. Maybe in the beard, that's about it. But as long as he's booting them the way he's booting them, keep going, big guy. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now out comes Houston. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? The pass there over the middle to start things out. 10-0 to score after one on EA Sports. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people have to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. Now high. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. Mr. Hyde, he enjoyed playing across the pond over in London. 19 carries, 160 yards in Week 9. His most rushing yards in a game since 2016 when he was with the 49ers. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They run high. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. He's not gonna get me. Watson. Screenplay, Johnson. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Only two on the screen pass there, and it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. 
It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They begin the drive with Hines. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Well, we saw them there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. From the 30 on second down, Brissett. This goes out right to Doyle. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 11 that time, and a Colts first down. First down, Indianapolis. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets them back now for second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though. Huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. The Colts on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and 11. Out of the gun, Brissett. And he's got Rodgers. 23 yards on the play. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 38. The throw over the middle taken in. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Throwing again on second down. Brissett, and his throw is incomplete. He was trying to find Mo Alley Cox as tight end, and it's third and short. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Brissett again. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Rodney Merciless, showing no mercy, flies in for the sack. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest ones, maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Well, as a kicker from that distance, 56, 57 yards, so many things you got to worry about. But I am a little surprised he didn't get it there. Yeah, with the way kickers are nowadays, we're surprised anything under 65 that it doesn't get at least to the crossbar. But remember this, you have to drive it a little bit lower in order yeah. to make that distance. And you also have to be worried about the interior rush that they can get their hands on it. So that's why those stronger kickers nowadays who can pop it up in the air and still travel and carry it. That's what you're looking for. It's a seven-yard carry to seven them up with a second and three well no matter how they phrase it staying on schedule staying ahead of the sticks whatever you want to call it seven yards on first down that fits the bill so they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three back to the ground this time it's high only a yard of the pickup there and it'll bring up a third down one thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, 
I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. To throw is Watson. And he's going to be hit and taken down. Back right around the 48-yard line. Credit that sack to Jabal Sheard. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they tell their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Brissett sets to throw it. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Jack Doyle that time, and it's third and short. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. He's got it to Hilton. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. First down. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. First down, Brissett. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Again, it's Brissett. Flushed out right. And now he's going to use his legs. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. Yeah, baby! Yeah! The Colts on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. They're up against a third and one situation. And the catch made by Hilton. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. They'll run on first down with Marlon Mack. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. A gain of three, second down. Check, 55, Mike. So don't say nothing. 
From the 31, Brissett. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Brissett. That'll be caught by Rodgers. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one... He rifles one that's intercepted. Zach Cunningham with a pick, and this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. Stepping aside from this game for a second, how about us being in week 10 of the NFL season right now? That makes me want to resurface that MVP talk we had earlier in the year. Who do you have right now leading in the MVP race? Is this quarterback's edition only, or can we actually bring other people oh, no, we, to it? Yeah, go wherever. Because the league does choice. tell you that MVP can be anyone, but numbers show us it's really got to be a quarterback. So let's just start there, right? Russell Wilson in Seattle. I think he has to be a prime guy. I think you have to look at Tom Brady, all right? It's always Tom Brady. Patrick Let's Mahomes, go. if he can get back into the lineup and be his usual self, he could get into this race again and maybe defend his crown. And Aaron Rodgers from Green Bay has really come on in recent weeks despite a stumble against the Chargers this past week. But how about Lamar Jackson? Mm. I mean, what he's doing with Baltimore and their win over New England, You've got to have him as a prime candidate, and you know how much I love Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, he's a special one, isn't he? Oh, he is absolutely special because he does it all. And if they weren't risking injury, he'd run back kicks, too. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Back in the first quarter, you said it. They need to avoid the big play, but he just got a big one right there. You can't relax, you know? We talked about it in the first quarter, but as the game progresses, still opportunities, and he took advantage of one there. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. From the gun, here's Watson. That's caught by his tight end, Jordan Akins. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Watson. He's got Fuller. And he'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark him down at the 9. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions. In the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it? For them to get downfield that quickly. And now first and goal. Expect them attack right here on this play. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. On second and a long way to go. Watson got an open man. It's QT. Really nice gain on the completion. However, still third and goal that they face now. Now Watson on third and goal. And he'll find Aikens there, complete. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Get him, boys! Get him, boys! Stop. 
So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And they weren't in zone coverage, they were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. That second down play nets a minus four. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. And I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him. for And he will be hit from behind and run over. Wow. Angelo Blackson with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. That would be exactly what they were looking for coming out to start the third quarter. Get a sack, get off the field, get the momentum going in their direction. Get the ball back to your offense, right? Get that momentum because, hey, this lead is very, very slim. The punt team on now is from their end zone. They get it away. On the return, Carter. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Texans with great field position to start this drive as they take over first and 10. Here's the Texans offense now readying for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big jump play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Throwing on second and eight. Watson looking deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. <laughs> Throwing on third down, Watson. He can run for it, and he will. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. Someone knew exactly where he needed to get to pick up that first down now. I'm not so sure about the technique in getting there, but he went for it, and he got it. Exactly. He knew where he needed to get, because remember, if he slides, when that derriere dips, if you will, that plays over. The derriere dips, I like that one. Yeah, they're working on it for a little bit. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. Give them 17 on a pickup there, and the Texans also get a new set of downs. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. First down, a run with Hyde. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. 
Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. And he'll get about four there as he takes it from the 10 down to the 6. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yeah, it's now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try to put it in that way. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. They'll try the air now with Watson. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. The sack by Marcus Hunt. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. And the catch made by Johnson. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. A gain of five, but not enough. Leads to a fourth and goal. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. The kick by Fairbairn is good. No one attempted or made more field goals than Fairbairn last year. He was 37 of 42. And they were grateful for every one of those that put three points on the board. About guarantee if Bill O'Brien, the head coach, is thinking to himself, we need to use him a lot less in 2019. Let's make sure we score some more touchdowns. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This is taken at his four. Then he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And the Colts coming out now. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Quick throw here to Hilton. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. This is Hines. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On play action, Brissett. He's going to air one out. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. 
give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. And here comes the Texans now. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post, that's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that would help him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Throwing again is Watson. Open man, the tight end fouls. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. How about the defensive effort from both of these teams that we've seen in this game? Would you say it's like a high-stakes chess match right now? Uh, chess is one way to go. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like it. Okay, the only reason I say that, you feel like they're contemplating their moves before actually making one, and none of them being done very confidently. Truth be told, I've never played chess, and I know that I'm not smart enough to play chess. Guys like you with your IQ, you can pull that off. Let's go. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Here's Brissett, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by the corner, Bradley Roby. And he will score. It's a touchdown. Charles, we've seen him target one of their main weapons time and time again. Maybe they went to that well too many times there. Yeah, and it's so difficult to determine how many times is too many because how many times have we seen a team go and play and say, until they stop us, we'll keep going. But they got stopped on that one, and it cost them six points. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and that gives him a three-point lead. Yeah, the lowest dies, but if you bust, you also die. But if you go over 21. I don't want to roll anymore. Yeah, but they're, ro they're rolling the skulls, which means they go up. Stop rolling. I am still broke. Damn it! <laughs> I just wanted one more skull. That was kind of weird. Oh no. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh no! Oh no, oh, no Brian! <laughs> Oh no! It pushed me! That's terrible. That, that was lovely. I like that. <laughs> I'm running the event scene in SpongeBob when Patrick is. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25 yard line. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. They'll start on the ground with Hines. He'll have a first down past the 40, and he takes it all the way up to the 47. That good for 22 and a first down. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. From the gun, here's Brissett. Taken in by the tight end, Doyle. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. 
They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 25-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. He shows you right there, he can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have a free safety, strong safety designation. They just have safeties. So wherever the ball is, one can be close to the line of scrimmage, one can be deep, and vice versa. On that play, and he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. Chester Rogers there to make the grab. And the Colts are going to jump back in front. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller, but they've retained their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height. Vinatieri now to tack on the PAT. And that will make this a four-point game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. On first down, Watson sliding out of the pocket. And he's going to keep it here. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. Watson, off play action. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. They were searching for the tight end, Darren Fells, and it's third down. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. He may try and run for this. 
And the tackle going to be made at the 41 as they stop him a few yards short of the first. Decent gain on the scramble at six, but now it's fourth. Here's Brian Anger now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Colts. They've got control of the football. They also have the lead as we start the fourth. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but it's still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. To throw is Brissett. His throw incomplete. Had an open man that time. They ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Colts on third down. They're hitting at 60%. Six out of ten thus far. This is third and four. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. He's got Jack Doyle. And they work this out past the 25. That catch puts him right at 100 yards receiving now, and it also gives him a first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. On first down, Mack. Well, I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The Colts on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This is third and eight. Out of the gun, Brissett. And he's got Rodgers. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Brissett to throw on first. And his throw here is incomplete. Zach Paschal, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Throwing again, Brissett on second and 10. Left side, Doyle with it. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 42. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. The completion good for three and it's second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Reset. He'll find Hines out of the backfield. 
Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Here we go. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. On first and ten, Brissett. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Second and 10 now from the 27. Check, check, check 41. You can't block me. You can't block me. You can't. Again, it's Brissett. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Brissett. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. And they're going to stop him short of the first down as he's tackled at about the 21. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. On the left hash mark, this is a 38-yard attempt. Vinatieri's kick is good. And that'll make this a seven-point game. Now, from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And now out comes Houston. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And now the throw going to Fuller, and he's got it. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. In 2018, Deshaun Watson had five fourth-quarter comebacks. Only Drew Brees of the Saints had more with six. Here's Watson. And nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. So a line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. Back to throw, Watson to the sideline, and it's caught, but boy, he's out of bounds. And they tried to get him into space, coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight, unable to find anyone open. The Texans on third down, a pretty anemic, a very anemic, one for nine thus far. This is third and ten. Watson, screenplay, Johnson. Yeah, that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. He loses four, and it brings up four. 
Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked out and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal, added on to their lead. But that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game. But we probably should go to the post-game press conference because <laughs> someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive. And he's going to profess that he was happy to get points. But and we know it? that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in. Even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line, they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell him to take care of the ball and try and move forward. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Running the sweep, Hilton with it. And the ball is knocked out, and the Texans scoop it. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. So they were down by a touchdown, probably just hoping the defense could hold them, maybe force the punt. Instead, they force the turnover and take it into the house. Well, the plan was perfect. That's exactly what they wanted. Instead, they got a lot more than that. Big time capitalization by taking the ball away and putting it in the end zone. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And partner, we've got a tie game here in the fourth. Fitting for what's been a tight ball game. We're all even at 20 now as the kick's away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. down they'll start out with Mack five yards on the carry good pickup on first down despite the blitz they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain the disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there after the pickup of five here's second and five They go play action with Brissett. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Bernardrick McKinney muscled his way in for the sack. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. To throw, Brissett. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. 
So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was because that's all defenses talk about, getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right, a lost opportunity. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. Here comes Carter. 12 yards on the return that time. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. Partner, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in the pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. Being chased out left. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Justin Houston, his second sack of the night. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Now Watson's throw is taken in by QT, and he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Keep playing hard. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. From the gun, a give to Hyde. Jamal sheared on the stop. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Watch the curve, watch the curve. Mike 50, Mike 50. Again, it's high, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. from the gun, Johnson. And this play going to be stopped in its tracks at the 32, and obviously well short of the first down. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This for the lead in the final stages. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Big kick right there to give them the lead in the fourth. But there is still time left for a final drive. Did they score too soon? Post game will tell us, right? Depending on what happens on this drive, that's how we'll analyze it. If the other team scores, they scored too soon. If they somehow hold on, they manage the clock exactly right. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. 
This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. So the Colts now down on the scoreboard. And time, a huge factor. They need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Brissett. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Bradley Roby there defensively. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scam the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Second and 10 now from the 27. Back to throw. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. It didn't check off every box, but the most important one. Got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. It may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. And they're left looking at third and eight after the second down pass play only went for two. Here's Brissett. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Now Brissett on fourth down. He's going to have his running back. It's complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. Oh, that's a big pickup right there. That play might have saved them. Now they got to get up to the line of scrimmage quick. They've got to spike it. One crisis averted, but they still need to move hastily. Back to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Hines. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Got it complete to Rodgers. And the clock will now stop on, as a timeout is called with five seconds left. Terry now ought to try the field goal for the Colts. This to potentially send us to overtime. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. Adam Vinatieri, the oldest player in the NFL, on for the Colts field goal. This to potentially send us to overtime. And this one is right down Broadway. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. This is taken at the three. Come on now, let's go! And 
and we have free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime because neither one got an advantage today. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down and attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Throwing again is Watson. Johnson's got it complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 16 yards on that one and also a Texan first down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. From the 50, it's Watson. He's got his tight end. It's Fells. That catch good for only a yard, and it will be third down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. It's third and four. Big play here. Trying to keep this opening drive of overtime alive. Out of the gun, Watson. This is Johnson. He's got it. And they have the first down with that gain of four yards. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. A 10th carry for Hyde. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. They run it again with Hyde. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Four down, four down. From the gun, here's Watson. He gets this one to Johnson. No gain at all on the play there, and that brings up four. Well done by the defense. They did their job here in overtime. Boy, did they ever, because now it's fourth and really long. So if you do decide to go for it, people think you might be a little bit on the nut side, don't they? But guess what? If I did decide to go for it, I'd call something deep. I'd throw a deep pass and hope that the defense didn't remember to just knock it down. If they intercept it, it's almost like a great punt and helps out your defense with field position. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it. 
but they turned it back over to him, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? And part one is done, now part two. Now the set. He's got Jack Doyle. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. To throw is Brissett. Throw complete there, Rodgers. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. A little dinking and dunking that they're doing. It, it, at some point, is it appropriate to maybe take a shot? It is, if you feel good about it. But otherwise, you do what a coach told me a long time ago. Take what they give you, but make them tackle. In other words, get it to one of your guys in space. If he makes someone miss, that could turn into the big play you're looking for. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. This is Mack on the counter. And he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. and be backed up to the 24. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. Take it in by the tight end, Doyle. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Now stopped him in his tracks. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. A little jet sweep to start the drive. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. This being their second opportunity in overtime, third overall drive, see if they can settle into a rhythm. And that's what you're looking for. Get a few first downs, move the ball downfield, have some confidence, get yourself in a spot where you can at least kick a field goal to win it. But I tell you this, if I'm the play caller, I'm looking at that part of my sheet that says playmakers. Get the ball in their hands, critical situation, now's their time. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Four yards to pick up, first down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. From the gun, a run for Johnson. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They go to Johnson again. 
Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. Two yards on the first down carry, and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. Throwing on third down, Watson. And a throw there going to be incomplete. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, and we're not talking about our on air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Neither team scored yet. Now we go to sudden death. Next points win this game. How about the tension right now? It is ratcheted up, isn't it? I mean, now whatever happens, points are scored. That's your ball game. Can't wait to see the defense now. Do they get a little more? Rush coming, and he's taken down. Bernardrick McKinney able to drop in that time for his second sack of the evening. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Here's Brissett. Middle of the field to the tight end, Doyle. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. And that last reception puts him over 150 yards. So tough to cover a big tight end like that. It changes the chalk, as one of my coaches like to say, meaning the normal things don't apply. All right, you used to say, okay, there's a tight end going out. We're either going to put a big linebacker on him or maybe a safety and call it a day. Now, because of the strength of that position and the sheer number of catches that they make as, as well as their dexterity, sometimes you have to put a cornerback on him because he might be the primary guy going out for a pass. It changes what they do defensively, and it's usually not good for the defense. So from the 36 now, first and 10. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. Now it's Hines. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. The last run got six, now second and four. Now a carry from Mack. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. They run with Hines. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. Now another timeout called for by the offense. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. Brissette to throw on first. Over the middle complete. It's Doyle. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. Good work after the catch. Going to net him 23 and a first. He's padding his already great numbers here in overtime. More importantly, though, moving his guys downfield. And I think that's exactly what's going through his head right now. Moving them downfield, putting them in a position to win the game. The stats, that's for the fantasy guys. <laughs> I know they're enjoying that show.
So it comes down to a man who has done this many, many times before, Adam Vinatieri. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. Well, we thought this game would be a good one. It did not disappoint into overtime, and it took the field goal to win it. And we always pay lip service to how important it is to play defense. And usually we focus on the big offensive pyrotechnics, right? But in this case, they got the ball back on defense, gave themselves a chance, and they capitalized on it with a victory. And I don't care what distance that field goal is from in overtime. The knees are always knocking, <laughs> but he pushed it through. Not only that, think about your snapper, your holder. A lot of nerves for them, too, because they have to do their job in order to give him one last chance to put a foot to it. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say good night, everybody.